Here to keep the chase going, share information, spread unity, preserve our heritage and our culture. We're trying to achieve something that you just can't catch. We're always trying to find a better way, trying to make better dogs. That's what Dixie Doggers Podcast is. That's who we are. This episode is brought to you by Rankin Ranch 38 Cattle Company. Mark Rankin specializes in Brahma and Brahma Cross Cattle in Oglethorpe County, Georgia. You can contact him at 407-832-2077. 407-832-2077. This episode is also brought to you by Phil Wilson of UC Hunting Properties. If you're buying or selling land, farms, or hunting property, these folks know land. You can contact him at 678-791-3483, 678-791-3483, or visit his website down below in the description. Canine parvovirus, CPV, is the virus that causes the disease known as parvo. It first emerged among dogs in Europe around 1976. By 1978, the virus had spread a check, causing a worldwide epidemic of myocarditis and inflammation in the intestines gastroenteritis. We now know that the virus is not limited to dogs, but is capable of causing infections in wild canines such as coyote and wolves, as well as other wild animals including foxes, raccoons, and skunks. CPV is closely related to feline panleukopenia virus, FPV, a virus that has been known since the 1920s to infect cats and mink and other animals. CV- CPV probably arose as the result of two or three genetic mutations in FPV that allowed it to expand its host range to infect dogs. Three decades after its first appearance, CPV strikes puppies with deadly disease much less frequently due to the development of effective vaccines in the late 1970s, but outbreaks still occur frequently and vaccinating your dog is of the utmost importance. It is a highly contagious virus that sheds in large quantities from infected dogs. It is also very hard to kill parvo vaccines or core vaccines for puppies for these reasons. It is an infectious DNA virus that causes serious illness in unvaccinated and young dogs. Higher risk breeds are Rottweilers, Doberman Pinschers, American Pit Bull Terriers, English Springer Spaniels, and German Shepherds. Its primary attack is on the body's rapidly dividing cells, the intestinal tract, and bone marrow are the most affected. In cases with young puppies, the heart muscle cells can be damaged as well. A dog with parvovirus will usually start to show parvo symptoms within three to seven days of infection. Early signs include lethargy, lack of appetite, and fever. You also, in my personal experience, we have noticed a very distinct smell. It'll have a, I don't know, almost a a putrid, not quite a rotten smell, but like bloody rotten. It, It usually starts smelling real bad even before it gets completely liquid their stool will start to soften a little bit but it'll definitely get a smell to it as the virus progresses they'll get abdominal pain vomiting like i said diarrhea very sick puppies can with parvovirus may collapse have a high heart rate have difficulty breathing have low white blood cell counts be hypothermic or be hypoglycemic hypoglycemic is low blood pressure hypothermic is cold Parvo in dogs is spread by contact with contaminated feces, but you don't have to see feces for the virus to be present. It can live on surfaces that have been contaminated, including on the ground, kennels, people's hands, objects, clothing. Dogs can also carry parvovirus on their fur or paws if they've come into contact with contaminated material. It can survive in a dog's environment for months, if not years, and is resistant to many disinfectants. However, it is susceptible to diluted bleach and some specialized cleaners commonly used in vet hospitals. Cleaning with a solution of one part bleach mixed with approximately 30 parts water is an acceptable method for disinfecting any indoor area, including bedding, food, water bowls, and all surfaces that once housed an infected dog. Parvovirus is species-specific, so humans have their own version of the virus. This means that humans cannot get parvovirus from dogs, and dogs cannot get it from people. However, it is still important to use the utmost caution by wearing personal protective equipment. While you may not get parvo, the virus can be spread in to another dog via your hands or your clothes. So the stages of parvo in dogs, the stages of this disease are the same as most viral infections. You have the infection, the incubation, and the illness. So an infection, it's going to get exposed to this via fecal matter from an infected dog or any other contaminated surface. All right, so now 
There's an incubation period, usually three to seven days, in which the dog is infected with it, but not yet showing symptoms. During this period, the virus specifically seeks out the most rapidly dividing cells in the body. Typically, it starts attacking tonsils or the lymph nodes in the throat. By targeting these rapidly dividing cells, the virus is able to multiply effectively and efficiently to invade other parts of the dog's system. Once it has multiplied and entered the bloodstream, the virus will seek out other sources of rapidly dividing cells. The most hard hit areas are the bone marrow and the cells that line the wall of the small intestines. And very young puppies, as previously stated, can also infect the heart, which causes inflammation of the heart muscle, poor heart function, and arrhythmias. So then you have the actual illness itself. When it infects the bone marrow, it attacks young immune cells, which leads a drop in protective white blood cells. This weakens the body's ability to protect itself and allows the virus to invade the GI tract more easily. This is where the worst damage happens. The virus attacks the lining of the small intestines, which prevents the dog's GI tract from being able to absorb nutrients, prevent fluid loss into the stool, and stop bacteria from moving into the gut wall and then into the bloodstream. This, all these things can lead to serious health issues and even death. While parvo in dogs is not always fatal, those that do not survive typically die from dehydration or shock, along with the damage caused by the septic toxins from the intestinal bacteria escaping into the bloodstream. For parvo treatment in dogs, there is no specific cure for parvovirus in dogs, so treatment revolves around supporting the puppy so the body can fight it off. Supportive care generally includes hospitalization with intravenous fluids, antiemetics to stop vomiting, Focusing on nutrition with the feeding tube if necessary, and correction of any electrolyte imbalances or low blood and glucose. Some vets may also recommend treatment with the canine parvo monoclonal antibody. Puppies exhibiting signs of sepsis when the gut becomes so leaky from the disease that the bacteria from the intestines enters the bloodstream requires antibiotic therapy. Puppies with high fever or low white blood cell count may also receive antibiotics. So the typical cost of treatment for parvovirus in dogs varies based on the severity of the illness, length of the hospital stay, and location of the veterinary clinic. Costs of goods start around several hundred dollars for outpatient treatment and go up to several thousand dollars for a severe case with hospitalization. On average, expect treatment to cost $1,000 to $2,100 minimum. My puppies M and Louie got parvo when they were like 12 weeks old after they had already had their second round of shots. So I'd noticed the smell before their stool really started changing and I had to go to a show. So I didn't want to bring them, of course, and, you know, spread parvo and dang sure not at a place where a bunch of other people were meeting dogs. So I took them to the vet and I want to say for they stayed three nights total. And then I got like a week's worth of medications. And I want to say it was fifteen hundred dollars after everything for two puppies. Like I said, that was in Starkville, Mississippi. So for that reference, it's much more cost effective to have your dog fully vaccinated than to have them contract parvovirus. Vaccines typically cost 30 to $50 at the vet. We have vaccines on our website. We have our five ways for $10 or nine ways for 12. You know, if you want to do it yourself at your house, uh, shipping is going to be a little bit more because we have to cool ship it. So just email us and we can get you set up with some vaccines as but as i said of course sometimes it just don't work sometimes your dog still just gets parvo because that's what happened with me with him and louis first signs of parvo in puppies puppy may seem lethargic and disinterested in food this can progress to vomiting and diarrhea with or without blood and fever take your puppy to the vet right away if you're experiencing lethargy anorexia vomiting or diarrhea the vet will likely start the parvo test and make a plan from there i want to say the parvo test was like 50 or 70 bucks something like that so at least the test is pretty cheap. Immunity for parvovirus lasts for several years. While not impossible, it is very unlikely that a dog that has recovered from canine parvovirus would get it again. However, this does not mean that your dog does not need to be vaccinated against canine parvovirus if they have had it in the past and recovered from it. Routine vaccinations should still be performed. So once a year, every few years, you know, it really just depends on what your situation is looking like. Cats also have a type of parvovirus that causes severe disease known as feline panleukopenia. While dogs cannot get feline parvovirus from cats, cats can become infected with canine parvovirus. Cats often have much more mild clinical signs than dogs do, but there is a strain of parvo in puppies and dogs that can cause severe illnesses in cats. 
as far as vaccines, you should do it. you can start giving them every two to four weeks from six to eight weeks to 16 to 20 weeks of age. So what we've been doing, we give them at six weeks, eight weeks. So we give them a five way, at six weeks, a nine way at eight weeks, and then give them another nine way at 16 weeks, you know, just double down on the immunity or you can go up either way or sometimes really just depending on availability of shots because sometimes the seven ways are hard to get or something like that. So we'll go five way at six weeks, seven way at eight weeks, and then do a nine way at 16 weeks. So that's how we do it. Do it however you or your vet recommend. To overcome a dog-sensitive GI tract after Parvo, contact your vet to see what prescription diets are out there. You can also feed a mixture of bull, chicken, rice, and canned pumpkin. All in season, of course. As far as other tips or tricks with Parvo, like I said, try and keep the dog warm. Key a heating pad on them. They become hypothermic uh, to fight the hypoglycemia. One thing that we've done in the past is get a little bit of peanut butter and just put it on the roof of the dog's mouth because they're not going to choke on it because it'll stick. But like their saliva and stuff will kind of break it down and they'll absorb at least a little sugar. You know, I've noticed it make a difference. I'm not sure if it makes all the world of a difference, but it definitely helps giving them Gatorade. Like I said, if you have access to intravenous fluids, give them something like that. If you don't know what you're doing, if you don't feel safe, if you're concerned, anything, always just go to a vet, contact somebody that's had a lot of experience with Parvo, you know, get a couple different opinions just from a couple of different angles. Never hurts at all. So as always, all the all the citation links are down in the description below. So if y'all want to go look at some of these pages or these websites with some of this information and do a little more deep digging yourself, feel free to go do so. Appreciate y'all. Hope y'all enjoyed that episode. Stay tuned for our new episodes every Monday and Wednesday. For questions, advertising, or just a chat, email DixieDoggers01 at gmail.com.